just wanted to bring you along with me for a ride through a typical suburban area and it is evening this is a very typical scene a bunch of kids playing soccer or football and a few dudes lounging out relaxing having coffee <laughs> children I mean because of the coronavirus the children's holiday period got extended so that's why there's probably more children out and about than normally although around this time I think it's typical even of a weekday or normal school day for children to be playing on the streets teenagers at the park kid grabbing something from the local store although I'll just show you down here here is what is going to replace that local store from what I've seen the Vinmarts, the franchises, they come along and replace all the local Tap stores, which are the Vietnamese versions of convenience stores. Bung Dao. That is a northern specialty, but it's very popular down south as well. It is these paper rolls, rice paper rolls, and it's kind of like a do it yourself taco thing where you grab the paper rolls and you put in little strips of meat and copious amounts of vegetables and leaves and a bit of noodle and it becomes something wonderful with the dipping sauce the famous dipping sauce um, which is supposedly an acquired taste but it is pretty delicious concoction so further to my video about which is freer Vietnam or USA I don't want to hark on it because you know it's a bit political but it was very um, pertinent that all the people in the American camp they were mainly Vietnamese by the way because they don't they're not going to accept basic facts and reality and truth because they already have their narrative set set in stone no facts or reality or truth is going to sway them whereas the foreigners they can look at Vietnam with a much more unbiased point of view I mean in a way I do admire the hard-headed old-school Viets that they're so wedded to their ideology and ideals that they'll never give that up you know after decades they're still angry and that's pretty cool because you don't see people wedded to ideals as much these days but on the other hand you've got the next generation their children that are equally wedded to those ideals but with no basis in reality just from hearsay of what their parents say which is generally not a bad thing to listen to older folk you know like most of the time that is the proven way to go but in this instance I think it's wrong to get back to my point I was saying that they all have the same point that they make the exact same point as well all right think of it this way if I were to ask you what is happiness you'd think a thousand different people would have a thousand different answers you know and freedom is a similarly ambiguous concept like you'd think there'd be a lot of different definitions for freedom but every single Vietnamese in America had the exact same definition of freedom they said I'm free because I'm able to go down the street and talk bad about our president or I'm free because I can go on a public forum and say bad things about the government 
like literally all of the proponents for a free America said that exact same thing and to my mind right when you have a whole bunch of people singing from the same hymn book about such a open concept as freedom then that shows that there's some element of indoctrination present if I were to ask a wide-ranging bunch of people what is happiness and all of them said happiness is the ability to go on a street corner and say something about the government and not go to jail you think wait a sec is that really your idea or did that originate somewhere else have you been programmed to say that the most important thing in life to you is the ability to go on a street corner and rant about the government and mind you have zero effect on the governing of your country or the politics of your country kissing into the wind so to speak that is the most important thing in life to you wow dude <laughs> that's not unusual man that's not unusual for an entire population to all arrive at the same concept of freedom and it just happens to be the one area where your country is technically freer i say technically because the ability to rant and have no effect on government does that really like speak to the power of the people i saw a video where it was shown that in oppressive dictatorships the population actually has more effect on government action than in the american democracy like if a lot of the middle class in America support something it has zero sway on whether that policy passes or not reflect on that dude <laughs> but yeah like pissing into the wind if it makes you feel free while you're a prisoner then more power to you I guess it's just very myopic it's a very narrow focus like Oh, my country is freer because I have this one thing that I can do where I can't do anything else, but I can do this one thing. And, you know, if you actually think about it, how many of those people that answered that way actually have practiced that? Like, I, I, I think zero, man. I think none of those guys that said I have political freedom exercise it. Like... Have you ever seen like a Vietnamese dude standing on a street corner talking bad about the government or go on political forums and say oh guys our American democracy sucks let's destroy the whole system not to say either of two parties is bad but to say the whole system is bad I haven't heard many Vietnamese people say that so the fact that they say that they hold that to such a high degree of importance but never actually use it that really speaks to me of propaganda rather than a organically arrived at conclusion you know you'd expect someone to say oh i have the freedom to um you know speak truth not just about politics but about facts of life you don't have that freedom in america buddy freedom of speech is very narrow and confined to what they allow you to speak about I think it was Chomsky, that anti-American shill, and I don't respect him, said something like, in America, you have the ability to vigorously debate in a very narrow sphere of topics. You know, you can't talk about everything, but you can talk about a very narrow sphere of articles that they wish you to debate about. But within that realm, you're free to go gangbusters. I've never felt the need to rant about the government here because I don't feel its pernicious effects the way I did in a Western democracy. You know, like people keep saying like, oh, Vietnam's so corrupt, you know, they, the, the coppers and the government take money from the people that's not true in Australia and America that's where the government is a leech is a parasite that sucks all the blood from the people look how rich those countries are man everyone should be living in 
prosperity. They should be having holidays left, right and centre. They should be working very relaxed hours, but they're not. The reason they even watch my videos is they don't have the holidays. They don't have the time, the freedom, if you want to put it that way, to visit other countries. And you may say, oh yeah, they just don't want to, mate. I think they want to. Like, if you look at travel videos on YouTube, there's a whole bunch of Americans, working class Americans and other Westerners from the Anglosphere that are really, really, really interested in visiting these countries. They just don't have the time or money or both. And you've got to compare apples to oranges. Like, Vietnam has 150th of the per capita GDP of America. These guys are 50 times poorer than Americans. So if Americans were 50 times poorer, would they be freer? You know, you can't compare a democracy that's like had centuries of build up, peacetime, hasn't ever suffered any real wartime catastrophes or impact on its economy and compare that to a different system that has just come out of a war but not only a war but economic sanctions that effectively muted the ability of Vietnam to grow there's not one country on earth that can prosper without trade and Americans destroyed Vietnam's ability to trade but people don't see those as reasons for Vietnam's relative poverty, they all point the finger at, oh yeah, it's the regime guys, it's uh, because they don't know how to govern the country guys. This country has only had 20 years of open economic relationships with other countries. They actually suffered more from the repercussions of the economic sanctions that America imposed than they did from the war, I think, the actual war which of course is a massive statement because the country was and is still feeling the effects of all the chemical warfare that America visited on the country. But yeah, like here, the, the tentacles of government don't encircle so hard. You hardly feel the effects of government, whereas in Australia, like I said, in matters of free speech, in matters of mobility, it was very, very stifling. I was getting fined every week in Australia. Here, you don't, you don't feel the tentacles of the government. In America, they also have property tax, so even if you bought and paid for your house, you still don't own it, because if you don't pay the property tax, you find out who really owns your property, and it's not you. You find out what you really mean to the American government, that you're just a tax slave when you try to leave, Think about it, in a free country, if you decide to never come back to that country, what right do they have to keep siphoning funds from you? For life, not just for some arbitrary period of time, but for life, like literally you're a slave for life. If you're a born American, you can never escape the clutches of the Tax man. Even if you go to another country to live and never come back to America, they're still going to tax you as a US resident. Why, man? Doesn't sound like you're free. Even a slave, man, in the old days, like if they got off the farm. They don't keep paying the slave owner with the fruits of their labor. But somehow America is entitled to your labor for life because you were born there, arbitrarily because you were born there. That gives them dibs on you for the rest of your life. Wow, dude, that sounds pretty possessive.
there's a lot of people just selling stuff man like these are the real capitalists this is real capitalism where a guy can just pick and choose his craft pick and choose what fields to enter into set up a store on the side of the road and no government is there to say hey man you need to pay your license for that or i need part of your earnings for contributing nothing anyway just a just a random ramble from me nhiều ký vậy? Ba năm mà hết rồi anh. Hết à? Ba năm ba ký. Yeah, that's Vietnamese capitalists, guys. They literally just set up shop on the side of the street. Pretty cool. They're just selling durian on the street side. You don't see that in the brute press United States. <laughs> 